When I'm making doors for fine furniture, nothing beats a mortise and tenon joint. But if I'm faced with a project with a lot of doors, like my recent kitchen renovation, I break out my trusty router table and a pair of cope and stick bits. That way I'm able to knock out a whole bunch of doors in just a short period of time. The bits come in pairs. One bit cuts a profile in a panel groove on the inside edges of all the parts. The second bit copes the end of the rails so the pieces join together in a Loctite fit. Now this cope and stick joint is not nearly as strong as a mortise and tenon joint. To make up for this, I like to use either plywood veneer panels or MDF panels, depending on whether I'm painting the door, and I glue those in place. That extra glue surface really makes for a rock solid door. Let me show you how I do it. Now most cope and stick bits are designed to cut a quarter inch groove. That works well on painted doors where I like to use an MDF panel. Because that MDF measures out at exactly a quarter of an inch, I have a nice tight fit. But on the doors I'm making today, I'm using veneered plywood. The problem there is that the plywood measures slightly less than a quarter of an inch. So if I use those same cutters, I'm going to end up with a really sloppy groove. It's a bad fit, it doesn't look good, and it's going to compromise the strength of the door. So instead I use a special bit that's adjustable. It's either available from Freud or Amana. Instead of just a single quarter inch wide cutter, it's got a pair of cutters to cut the groove, which allows me to add or subtract shims to open or close up the groove that it cuts. Using this bit, I can adjust the groove so I get a really tight fit. I'm going to start by routing the profile on the inside edges of all my parts. It's really important to start with square, straight, flat stock. Any warp or twist is going to result in a twisted door, which is almost impossible to flatten after glue up. I've milled everything to width and thickness, but I've left everything long. That'll mean fewer pieces to run through the router table. Adjust the height of your stick bit until it produces a 16th inch fillet on the outer face of the door parts. Use a metal straight edge to align the bearing of the bit precisely with the fence and attach feather boards to hold the stock both against the table and the fence while routing. I'm routing mahogany, so I'm comfortable making the cut in one pass. But for tougher woods like oak or maple, you may need to take two passes to reach final depth. In that case, set up for a three-quarter depth cut and route all the stock before adjusting the fence for the final pass. You'll get a much cleaner cut this way. So with my edges profiled, it's time to cut all my parts to length. I started by marking the dimensions of the case opening on a story stick, both the width of the door and the height of the door. The styles, that's the part of the door pieces that run straight up and down, those are easy. I just cut those slightly oversized. The panel itself is going to determine the height of the door, so this dimension is not critical. It just needs to be a little bit longer than what you want it. The rails, on the other hand, are a little bit tricky. They sit between the styles, so we need to subtract the width of the styles, but then add back in the depth of the groove. Sound confusing? It can be, but here's a really simple way to get around that. I made a simple setup block equal to the width of the two rails minus their grooves. Use this in conjunction with the story stick and a stop block. There's no math involved. I set my story stick on my crosscut sled fence with a tick mark aligned to the blade and I make a mark on its end. Then I set my setup lock, mark to the inside of that. All I need to do is set up a stock block to that mark, and my rails are dialed in. So with everything cut to length, all that's left is to cope the ends, and we've got a door frame. To cope the ends of the joints, we're going to be running the work pieces across the router table perpendicular to the fence. This is a little bit scary. To back up the workpiece and make this a little bit safer, it's good to use a sled. This is about as simple as it gets. Just a piece of half inch plywood, a piece of stock to act as a fence, and a couple hold down clamps. The workpiece goes in place, it's held securely, and it makes it a whole lot safer to cope the ends of the joint. Now here's a tip. For half the cuts, the flat side of the stock is going to be against the fence. For that, I'm going to have just a sacrificial piece of stock to act as a zero clearance fence to avoid any tear out on the back side. 
when I flip it around, the profiled edge is going to be against the fence. It's really easy to get tear out here. The trick is to run a piece of stock across your coping bit. It gives you a mating profile. So when we're routing that part, simply insert that in place, put it against the fence, and you're going to have a tear out free cut. Setup is easy. Just rest the workpiece on the sled and raise the bit into position. Be sure to make a test cut before making your final cuts. To clamp the workpiece, position the sled against the fence, put the workpiece in place and slide it against the fence as well, and then tighten the clamps. A little sandpaper removes the fuzz, then we're ready to cut the panel and glue up the door. The last task before glue up is to cut the panel to size. Its width is determined by the rail. Cut it about a sixteenth of an inch narrower than the width of the rail to make sure it doesn't interfere with the joint fully seating when you glue it up. To determine the length, get out your story stick and your setup block. The length of the panel is equal to the opening in the cabinet minus the setup block. Mark the panel's location on the style to ensure that it's centered for glue up. Apply glue along the panel grooves to the styles only. Then apply glue to the coped ends of the rails. Install the panel in the style making sure it's fully seated. Next, attach the rails to either end, snug them up tight to the panel and slide them down into the style. Finally, add the last style and clamp everything together. So the key here when clamping is to put just enough pressure on to close the joint, but not so much pressure that you're skewing the angle of the styles. It's such a short joint that it's really easy to bow those and you'll end up with a wacky door if you're not careful. Once the joints are fully seated, I'll use a straight edge to make sure that my styles are nice and flat. It's nice and flat. So that's it. When the glue is dry, I can take that out of the clamps. All the ends will be trimmed down when I fit the door. It's a lot of fuss and work for just a single door, but if you have a whole batch, it's definitely worth the effort. You should give it a try.